Now, thank you all and welcome everyone. I am Kathy Fresh, Director of Development, and it is my great pleasure to introduce Dr. Don Joy, who will serve as our MC for tonight's program. Dr. Joy is the Director of the Villa Maria School of Nursing, Associate Dean of the Morosky College of Health Professions and Science, and Assistant Professor, Villa Maria School of Nursing. Dawn. Good evening, everyone. Um, I always like to um, uh, honor the fact that the Villa Maria School of Nursing is in a wonderful place to kick off homecoming weekend, being sort of one of the first events that um, occurred during this wonderful weekend. And I'd like to go back to the history of our school. And so I want to spend a few minutes um, sharing that with her. The Sisters of St. Joseph of Northwestern Pennsylvania trace their history back to 1650 in France, where a small group of women were drawn together to dedicate themselves with God, to God and works of salvation and sanctification. These young women performed all sorts of spiritual and corporal works of mercy, including the care of the orphans and the care of the sick, with special attention to the needs of the poor, and in particular, a, a, a strong focus on the education of young women. Education became an important part of the congregation. And in 1925, the Sisters of St. Joseph established Villa Maria College here in Erie, Pennsylvania. The nursing program was first established at Villa Maria College and it enjoyed national recognition and we still do and has served as an important and inspirational foundation for our nursing students of today as well as, as, well as our nursing graduates of yesterday. In fact, our program um, way back in 1952 was one of the first five baccalaureate programs to be approved in the state of Pennsylvania. So we're very proud of that. I'm very proud to be a graduate of that program, not in 1952, by the way. So I, I like to think of our program as a baby boomer. In 1990, Bill and Maria College merged with Gannon University, but in recognition of the level of academic excellence that the nursing program was known for, the Bill and Maria School of Nursing at Gannon University was created to honor this history and to continue this important contribution to professional nursing education. Homecoming is always a tradition of welcoming, welcoming students back to the school that they attended. And with this tradition in mind, I would like to welcome home all of our graduates and our very own Julie Cleaver, class of 2011, who exemplifies not only the mission of caring and education of our founding sisters of St. Joseph, but also the drive and excellence and intellectual pursuit in addition to giving back to the profession of nursing and the school where it all started for her brilliant career. Julie Cleaver, BSN, RN, BM, TCN, is a clinical nurse on the bone marrow transport, transplant unit of Sloan Kettering, Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York City. She is a 2011 graduate from Gannon University where she earned her baccalaureate degree. And she also had a minor in leadership. And I can tell you from um, my administrative position, it's not an easy feat to have a minor when you are our nursing student. So in, in addition being an athlete. And she was captain of the women's basketball team. And from what I understand, I wasn't quite here in 2011, but from what faculty have told me, she was one of our first nursing student slash athletes. She earned an environmental health certificate in May of 2018 from the University of Maryland School of Nursing and is currently pursuing her master's in nursing leadership and healthcare systems from the University of Colorado, Denver. She's involved with several councils and committees within her institution and has published multiple articles in peer reviewed journals about the nurse's role with sustainability. Obviously, Julie is passionate about sustainability, but also health and wellness. She loves to travel and is very um, interested in delicious varieties of cheese. In addition, um, and very excited, we are, um, we are very excited that she also serves on the Gannon University National Alumni Board. 
So please join with me in extending to Julie Cleaver a warm, eerie, and Villa Maria School of Nursing at Gannon welcome. And we will, we will virtually clap for Julie. <laughs> So it is now my pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Lorraine Danis, who is Associate Director of our School of Nursing, and Dr. Danis is going to lead us in a prayer. Thank you, Dr. Joy. If everybody could just bow their heads for a moment. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And this is called the Multiple Blessings Prayer. Comfort in times of loneliness, blessings in times of sorrow guidance in times of decisions that we must face tomorrow, relief in times of suffering, courage in times of fear, protection in times of danger that may be lurking near, peace in time of turmoil, strength in time of temptation, forgiveness in time of conviction would bring to us such revelation, warning in times of indifference, deliverance in times we are weak, rest in the times we are weary, these multiple blessings we seek. Where can we find this guidance? Why from our Savior above, who always watches over us and fills our hearts with love. Amen. Now it is my pleasure to introduce um, Dr. Sarah Ewing who is the Associate Professor and Dean of the Morosky College of Health Professions and Sciences. Thank you, Lori, and good evening, everyone. I would like to ex extend a warm welcome to all of you joining us today for the 2020 Villa Maria School of Nursing Distinguished Nursing Alumni Lecture. We are excited to welcome our honoree, Julie Kleber, and all of our Villa Maria College and Villa Maria School of Nursing alumni, Gannon University faculty, staff, students, and administrators, community partners, colleagues, and friends of the university. The Morosky College of Health Professions and Sciences is a collaborative community of faculty, staff, clinical educators, and students who are committed to delivering exceptional academic programs that prepare students to become knowledgeable innovative and socially responsible professionals within their careers and communities. Our vision is that through the work of our team and our alumni, we will help to address the health and scientific needs of a global society. Within the college, we like to say learning today, transforming tomorrow. And our purpose at Gannon is to help transform the lives of others, including our students, one another and members of our community. In order to meet the healthcare needs of our society, we remain focused on quality healthcare education and have continued to develop and expand the opportunities for our current and future students to pursue their passion of helping others through the health profession. The Morosky College now offers 17 ac core academic undergraduate and graduate health professional programs from our Erie campus and seven academic graduate health professional programs from our Ruskin, Florida campus. Each program is organized within one of our five schools, including the Villa Maria School of Nursing, but also including the School of Medical Sciences, School of Rehabilitative Sciences, School of Public Health and Health Sciences, and our School of Sciences. It's a mouthful. We currently have an active enrollment and growing enrollment um, within the college of over 2,100 students supported by 120 full-time faculty and 18 staff members. Our success as a leader in healthcare education stems from the academic excellence established by the Villa Maria College nursing program and Gannon University's commitment to delivering exceptional healthcare education that is grounded in the liberal arts and Catholic social teaching. This commitment has also established the university as a leader in developing competent, kind, selfless, and innovative healthcare professionals who are continuously committed to lifelong learning, service within their communities, and compassionate care of their patients. Each year, we are honored with the opportunity to recognize one of our nursing alumni for their accomplishments within and contributions to the field of nursing and their community. Julie Kleber was an exceptional student, athlete, and leader in and out of the classroom during her time at Gannon. Since then, she has established herself as a well-rounded, caring, and educated nurse, one we would all hope for when seeking care for ourselves, 
our family members, our friends, and our community. She has pursued a career she is passionate about with drive and an ongoing commitment to transforming the lives of others through her work, her service, research, and ongoing education. Congratulations, Julie, on your success and accomplishments and for this well-deserved recognition. Now it is my pleasure to welcome Dr. Uh, Dr. Carol Amen to provide a few additional opening remarks. Dr. Amen is a member of the class of 1988 from the Villa Maria College and a current assistant professor within the Villa Maria School of Nursing. She is gonna speak on behalf of the Sigma Theta Tau, Eta Xi chapter, um, which, which she currently serves as president. Dr. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Ewing. Good evening. I am pleased to represent the Eta Xi chapter of Sigma. The annual tradition of the Distinguished Alumni Nursing Series has really been a combined effort since its inception with the Villa Maria School of Nursing, the Morosky College of Health Professions and Sciences, and as Kathy Fresh noted, the many professionals here at GAN and behind the scenes who have worked diligently and tirelessly to bring this event to fruition. It is so exciting that when this event first began, initially our speakers were graduates that take us back to our roots from the Villa Maria College. But tonight, we have our first distinguished graduate from the Villa Maria School of Nursing here at Gannon. The Honor Society of Nurses, Sigma Theta Tau International, or simply Sigma as it's now known, is known for the promotion of excellence, education, research, and practice. We are proud to continue in the tradition of highlighting our graduates who exemplify the Sigma ideology and promote all that the organization represents. For this biennium, the call to action is to infuse joy. And as Sigma members and healthcare professionals, we are well positioned to infuse joy into our practice, be it clinical, administrative, research, education, policy settings, as well as in our own personal life, maybe now so more than ever. This call to action could not be timelier, as we have all had to shift dramatically and selflessly to meet the needs of not only our students, but to those who are entrusted to our care in all capacities. The Sigma call to action highlights three essential elements that promote joy, awareness, balance and purpose, and co-creation. It is really timely then that the message tonight will be one that encompasses these elements. I, along with many of my colleagues, are excited to have one of our outstanding graduates return to be with us, and one that I have had the honor and privilege to teach, to present to us tonight. At this time, I would like to invite Dr. Don, Don Joy back to introduce our amazing speaker once again. Don? Thank you very much, uh, Carol. Um, it's, it's always wonderful to um, revisit the great relationship that um, we have with Sigma, that that is no easy um, task and it is a great honor and we have a number of Sigma scholars in our presence. So without further ado, I would like to introduce our speaker for this evening and we are um, once again blessed and very grateful that she was able to uh, consider this opportunity for us. Julie Cleaver, who will teach it, who will share with us lessons from the bedside, adaptability and intentionality. Thank you. All right, thank you so much for all of those accolades. Um, yeah, so let's get started. So I'd like to thank all of you, Dr. Joy, Dr. D Dr. Donetz, Dr. Ewing, Dr. Amen, Kathy Fresh, Allison Mosier, and Tony DePasqua, the Villa Maria School of Nursing, and Gannon University for putting this lecture together via Zoom. And it really is an honor to come back to Gannon, even if it is virtually, and speak to nursing students because not so long ago, I was in Erie doing rotations at Hammett and St. Vincent and even the prison for community health, learning about how my voice can make an impact in policy and politics with Dr. Amen and learning how to properly assess a patient for the first time. I'll never forget the pure joy I felt when I was in Palumbo for health assessment one and I passed the test of accurately taking a blood pressure and it was such a rush and I'm not joking, I'm pretty sure I literally called my mom the second after I passed that test. I was so excited. But there's nothing I'm going to say today that will magically move you from good student to great student 
or from a nurse who meets expectations to a nurse who exceeds expectations. You have to be an active participant in your own growth and development. So everyone knows I played sports, so I follow Nike, Adidas, Under Armour. And there's a particular Under Armour ad right, out right now with the mantra, the only way is through. And I think that rings so true in life and in our careers. We test ourselves, push our limits, expand our minds and our souls. We move out of our comfort zone and uh, we learn to be comfortable being uncomfortable. You just have to go through it. What I will share tonight is my story and my journey in hopes that a part of it will resonate with you enough to elevate yourself to be the best version of you. So when I was a Gannon student, nursing student, I'll rewind the clock a little bit. I was a student athlete at Gannon on campus in Erie, Pennsylvania from 2006 to 2011, where I was a nursing student, as you have heard before, and also a women's basketball player. And I believe that time frame, as many college graduates probably feel, was critical for my own development and enhanced the person I was when I started at Gannon in 06 to shape me to the person I am today in 2020. And in prepping for this talk with all of you, I went back into my Gannon files on my MacBook. And yes, I still have my college assignments and papers saved. And I found one assignment that stuck out. I was tasked with defining what do I stand for? Now that's a heavy assignment to undergo as a college student who is just starting to figure out the world. But I went back and read it to give myself some perspective and insight into my life at that time. After all, I wrote it in February 2010, during my junior year of nursing school, which we all know is one of the more challenging years. There's a lot of clinical rotations there and a lot of information to digest. And it also appears I finished the assignment at one in the morning, so it's pretty typical for a college student at that time. But in my opening paragraphs, I asked the questions, am I being a good friend? Am I thanking the people that need to be thanked? And am I keeping in touch with people that are important to me? And when I read this back to myself in 2020, I noticed that I still ask myself those same questions. And what this all culminates to is, am I being intentional? Next slide. So this brings us to intentionality, the act of being deliberate or purposive. So as you've probably done the math, I've been a nurse for nine years now, all in oncology and specifically acute care bone marrow transplant. And what this means is my patients primarily have leukemias, lymphomas, and blood disorders incurable without a bone marrow transplant. We infuse a lot of chemotherapy. The patients can get very sick. So think high fevers, incredible fatigue, mouth sores, other GI issues, sepsis, central line infections, many, many, many blood products and platelet transfusions. The list just continues to grow for our patients. And then once their new bone marrow starts to regenerate after their transplant and their symptoms resolve, they no longer need to be monitored as closely in the hospital. So overall, they average about a month with us in a hospital setting. And there is absolutely too much to review about what I've learned about nursing and what it means to be a nurse and specifically an oncology nurse. But for me, it boils down to the two things I've titled this talk adaptability and intentionality. I'm gonna switch it up a little bit. So I'm gonna start with intentionality first. So the act of being intentional with my patients. So my unit flipped to be a COVID unit this past March up until mid-May. We're in New York City and we were hit very hard. I worked exclusively with patients of all services at that point. No service was off limit. No longer bone marrow transplant anymore. I was out of my comfort zone 100%. And the intentionality took a whole new meeting for me. It was amplified. It was me and the patient. And that's it. No one else was allowed in the rooms. I had to be intentional about what I was bringing in so I did not have to remove and redon all of the PPE just to retrieve a specimen cup or medication from outside the room. I had to be intentional about how long I was in the room to reduce my risk of exposure. But most of all, I had to be intentional about seeing this patient as a person during this time. And we all know, all know the numbers, 
the statistics, the bed counts, the ICU headroom. But as a nurse, we know that the bed occupies a person and we treat them holistically as the whole person. And that is what we learn as Gannon nursing students. I had to own that this person not only was being treated for cancer, but now has acquired a virus in a pandemic, was not allowed to have visitors, and I was their only source of physical contact. And that weighed incredibly heavy on my soul. And I've heard other nurses throughout my career answer a question or a phone call with the phrase, oh, I'm just the nurse, let me get you so-and-so. No, you are not just a nurse. And there's a picture a colleague showed me at work amidst the pandemic that really resonated with me that I'd like to share with you. Next slide. So this came from social media. I couldn't track down the original source, I'm sorry. But take a look and read through, some, read through some of these different job titles. Pharmacist, chef, case manager, social worker, respiratory therapist, thank God for them during the pandemic, physical therapist, doctor, family counselor, housekeeper, maintenance, phlebotomist, psychologist, cosmetologist, negotiator, mother, and chaplain. And I especially like how next to some of them, the arrow goes both ways, showing that you too need to care to be able to perform, you too need care to be able to perform in your primary job. And I felt during that time and mostly throughout my career that you are not just the nurse. Sometimes your environmental services after a patient vomits on the floor and you just wanna clean it up just as fast so they don't smell it and continue to vomit, and sometimes your chaplaincy services, when a dying patient grabs your hand and asks you to pray with them, even if you aren't the same religion as them, or maybe you don't even believe in prayer at all. And sometimes you're the pharmacist and catch the dispensing of a medication in which the patient has a peripheral line and you can infuse central line dosing of potassium through a Heplock. And all these things have actually happened to me. And for context, I do believe in the power of prayer. I did graduate from Gannon after all. But this picture represents the intention with which we must interact with our patients. Think of it as all the different hats that you wear. And while I am incredibly proud to be a nurse in a year that the World Health Organization declared the year of the nurse, remember, you are not just the nurse. You, Victoria, you, Riley, you, Adam, are so much more than that. And it's an empowering statement to say to yourself when you graduate and pass your boards. Remember when you pass that NCLEX, you are now a representative of an entire profession of empathetic human beings. Be intentional with your actions. Treat your patients as people, not bed 12 or gurney in Southwest hallway. And I believe this will also make your careers more fulfilling. It's made it all worth it for me at the end of my long and tiring shift for a patient to look at me intently and say, thank you, Julie. And your intentionality that day resonated with them enough for them to be intentional back and thank you. And as you journey on to another facet of your life that evening or morning if you work night shifts, which I did for a number of years, that intentionality will keep you coming back each shift. And a part of being intentional is also doing the right thing. Do not cut corners early in your practice because it's faster or because your preceptor is upset that he or she cannot stay late with you on orientation. That's their problem. You stay late and put in the work. And I tell this to every nurse I have oriented. There will be plenty of chaos moment, chaotic moments throughout a shift where you feel like you can't catch up or seem to do anything with the excellence that you did in sim lab and undergrad. And there are so many tasks left to be done. But when you cut corners, you're setting yourself up to fail later. And your patients count on you. Be intentional about that early in your career because how you perform and the habits you create and the foundation you lay when you start out as a new nurse is how you will practice years down the road. 
Be intentional with your coworkers. Get to know them personally. You will not be best friends with every one of them, but there will be a few that you journey with over the years that you can call for every rectal tube insert because you know she not only has the touch, but she also has your back. Latch on to the people that will build you up and grow with you and treat those that are negative and try to bring you or the team down with the ultimate kindness. We have probably heard the phrase, everyone is going through something, which is incredibly poignant this year. We literally are all going through something, much of the same, which is why I wanna underscore the importance of getting to know your coworkers personally. When you understand their purview and look at your coworkers holistically, the same way you do your patient as a whole person, that is being intentional with your coworkers. You don't need to know every detail about their life. They're entitled to some privacy. But the ability to be curious and recognize when their demeanor or their attitude during your shift is being intentional and empathetic towards them. And that goes for all of your coworkers. So this slide with the picture with the jobs, outside of a pandemic setting, those job titles are actual people who can help. And I hate to say it, but sometimes one nurse is not good enough and you need to call for help. I struggle with this a lot. I feel like I can do it all and I can't, and I have to call for help. And I'm nine years in. At some point your shift ends and someone else takes over while you are resting and recharging. And that is okay. You need to do those self-care measures to ensure you are functionally, functioning optimally as well. And being an athlete all of my life, shout out to the Gannon Women's Basketball Program, um, I've learned what a thriving team is supposed to look like. The attributes a thriving team is supposed to display. The same ones I've titled this talk, intentionality and adaptability. The tough conversations we have to have. How your interactions outside of the workplace affect your interactions at work and affect the rest of the team you can influence your team's ability to thrive or not. It basically comes down to exist or thrive. And lastly, the calling out you have to do because the mission is at stake. The patient's life is at stake. And it is not easy to call another nurse out, especially if they are more senior than you. And I had to do this yesterday and it was still really awkward and uncomfortable, but I had to do it. And when you have the team in mind and the thriving culture in mind, you will. Pull that person aside, away from the group, away from a patient's ear, you never do it in a room, and have an authentic conversation about what you feel could have gone better. And if you show up to that conversation with kindness, the majority of the time it breaks down those uncomfortable barriers. And you need a solid team to heal that patient. You need to be intentional about your communication with your coworkers and intentional about your camaraderie. Show up. Show up to work. But absolutely not if you're sick. I just want to put that disclaimer out there. Do not come to work if you're sick. Offer to help, especially early on, because you're still learning and any new situation will help you grow. And I still continue to refine my own practice as I precept because a new nurse may have a better technique or a better demeanor with a difficult patient that I admire. And you all know nursing is lifelong learning. I know our nursing program at Gannon has driven that home. All that said, I would not have mentally made it through one of the most anxiety provoking experiences in my career without my coworkers. And quite frankly, our patients would not have survived had we had a faulty and unreliable team. We were built for that moment. The intentionality we continue to seek with each other at work enables us to cultivate a culture of reliability and adaptability and carry us over the years and as we bring newer nurses onto our team. Next slide. So as was mentioned in my bio, I am a cheese savant. I don't think I could ever be vegan because I'd have to give up cheese. And I have tried vegan cheese just does not strike the same note on my palate as regular cheese does, so. But what happens 
when someone takes your favorite block of cheese and moves it. So there's a book entitled as such, and I read it while I was a Gannon student. It wasn't assigned for a class or anything. I was just up at Barnes and Noble on Peach Street. Not sure if it's even there anymore, but it caught my eye, probably because it had the word cheese in the title. But the book centered on being adaptable and how you shift perspectives and pivot throughout your life. So let's take it back to peak pandemic. I'm gonna give you guys a case study because what nursing student does love a good case study? So it's mid-March, 2020. You are a senior nurse on your unit. You have been working at your institution for a number of years. You've climbed the clinical ladder, been involved in several committees and projects, and a patient results positive for COVID-19 on your unit. And you're the charge nurse that day. One of the first patients in the entire hospital. No one knows how this is spread. This patient has already been on our unit for days. Your nurse leader is out sick. And by the way, the entire country is gonna close the borders. Things are changing every hour, especially the infection control protocols. One minute you're reworking the schedule with your colleague to ensure that those have, that have been exposed are quarantined at home. And the next you're trying to calm down an environmental service personnel who's having a full on meltdown about potentially being exposed to a deadly virus. And the uncertainty of that time was in a word, overwhelming. And one night I was FaceTiming with one of my best friends late at night because I would come home too anxious to sleep. My head would be spinning thinking about how I was going to wake up and attack the next shift. I'm constantly refreshing my email to read new correspondence from our hospital leadership about changes that were being made. So I actually felt prepared when I walked into work the next day. And my friend just goes, you're not okay. No, I wasn't. So what do you do? I just want you to sit in this chaos for a minute because at the beginning, that's all I could do is sit with it and feel the weight of it. And then as a nurse, you act and you realize you were made for this. The chaos of balancing an 18 to 21 credit course load at Gannon or more the chaos of trying to study for six classes at once, the chaos of being a student athlete, as some of you may be, and juggling all the demands of athletics and academics, the chaos of balancing a tough patient assignment as a new nurse, you learn to adapt. You actually realize you've been adapting in your personal life, in nursing school, and into your early career already. It's now just apparent what that all means and why you had to go through it. Every day we adapt to new situations, the weather, where to safely eat lunch, and even this year you are all experiencing and adapting to a completely new college experience. But what I feel sets nurses apart is how swiftly and effectively we can pivot and adapt to these new situations. And in that case study, there were many factors out of my control. So control what you can, control the controllables. And we started formally asking our patients every day as part of our assessments, what their goal is for the day. And I really enjoy this because it gives them some level of control in a situation they don't really have control of. They can't control their disease, the programming of the IV pump. They can't control the surgeon's hands if they go undergo anesthesia. They can't even control their own bowel habits sometimes. But defining a goal for them gives a sense of ownership and purpose. And oftentimes the goal changes throughout the day as their condition changes. Their goal in the morning may be to walk 10 laps around the hallways. I'm gonna get out and walk 10 laps. But when they start moving and the fatigue from the anemia settles in, they may need to modify their goal to two laps. And I say this because my patients inspire me to adapt as my shift goes on. You will start out your day with a whole checklist of medications, tasks, phone numbers to call back, lab values to follow up on, emails to answer. And as you get pulled in different directions, your priorities change and you adapt and adjust to provide the best outcome for all your patients that day. So I ask you, what do you stand for? 
The combination of being intentional with your actions and adaptable with your mindset and approach to your practice is a powerful skill set to own. Next slide. So I want to leave you with something my mom, I'm pretty sure is out there watching, who is also a nurse, said to me early on in my career, we may not always cure, but we can always care. And this is especially poignant for me to say today because yesterday I did have a patient die on my shift and she had been with us for a month and was transitioned to comfort care. And I kept thinking about this quote because we didn't cure her, but we never stopped caring for her. And I don't believe any of you in the Gannon nursing program went into it for the notoriety the money, this fabulous work attire. You went into nursing because you care about others and want to serve others. And how you go about being intentional with others and how well you lean into adaptability will determine your ability to thrive no matter what situation you're thrust into. And I am excited for all of you to start your journey as nurses and I sincerely hope your passion for this wonderful, wonderful profession guides you down some amazing, amazing roads full of people that will elevate you to be the best version of yourself. And that is all I have tonight. Julie, this is Kathy. That was remarkable. I came to tears a few times got myself back, all is good. Um, <laughs> there is one question that came to us. Sure. Um, it, what skill set did you acquire through your job and training as a nurse that helped prepare you for the pandemic in New York? I think it's really everything I talked about. Um, being adaptable, having um like i said you just have to go through it there i've had a lot of tough assignments early on in my career and i think that made me a better nurse because i had to adapt to them and i had to be intentional with my patients i still wanted them to have good outcomes and i had to adapt to having a tough patient assignment and that just helps you be more agile in your nursing career and like I said, it's just something you have to go through. It's nothing you learn in textbooks. It's nothing you're gonna learn from this talk. I just hope I can make you more aware that those skills are ones that you will have to acquire if you're gonna thrive in the nursing career. Thank you. Um, we are getting a couple more questions. What are your COVID responsibilities now or are you back to your oncology work full time? No, well, we are uh, an oncology center, so that is our focus, is treating oncology patients. Um, if we do have patients that come in having COVID, we have a whole array of protocols that we have to go through, you know, intervals that we're screening our patients at, depending on if they're outpatient, inpatient, what procedure they're getting. There's, fortunately now, there's a lot more procedures and protocols there that we have reference to that simply didn't exist in March when this all started. It was chaotic. So now we have, um, we have response to this. Thank you. Um, one other question. How do you manage your own self-care? Um, I still play basketball. I did up until the pandemic. Um, yeah, run, listen to music, go out with my friends when I could go out with my friends. Um, Probably just your typical self-care, I guess. Um, there's no special formula. You just kind of have to figure it out based on your interests. Um, I will say, don't overwork yourself. Don't work more than a few shifts in a row. I think that's crucial to having that time away to process and digest what you've been through. Because a, a lot of the jobs that you're going to go through, whether you work in an ER, or oncology, um, hospice, administration, whatever you end up in, it can be traumatic in, in um, like micro cuts. So having that time away 
I prefer to vacation again when I could um, prefer to travel uh, just to, to get away and enjoy the beauty of all that this world has to offer us. Um, there is one more question that came up and as a former nurse, I would love to hear your answer. How did you adapt from night shift to day shift? Because mm. none of us got away from night shift. I adapted very well. <laughs> um, I think I'm an early bird, probably from all those five more 5 a.m. practices that we went through. Um, I prefer the mornings more than I did the evenings, but we had we had a lot of fun on nights. Um, adapting to it, it, it really wasn't that hard because I felt like it went with my biological clock, but adjusting to nights going the other way. Um, people, people make a world of difference when you're working with, that's what I mean about being intentional. When you're intentional with your coworkers and you get to know them, some of my best friends are still my coworkers that I worked with at night. And that camaraderie and that fun that we had, you know, living in New York City, you're blessed with things being open super late. Um, so we would spend time together on our off shifts, you know, two in the morning, whatever, it didn't matter. Um, but the adjustment tonight's hard. That's, there's no denying that you're completely switching your biological clock. But I think having the people there with you uh, makes, makes a world of difference because you're all in it together. You're all communicating together. And when you work with your friends, it's, it's not work. It's, uh, it's still a job, obviously, but um, it's, it becomes a more enjoyable one. You're an amazing <laughs> woman. Amazing. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I'd like to turn it over to Dawn at this time. Well, Julie, um, I'd like to echo what Kathy said. I was moved to tears many times. I, I did not have the pleasure and honor of serving as your faculty when you were here, but you have um, just exemplified what our school is all about. I am hoping that you can see the many wonderful comments that have been placed into the chat. Um, my own included about what a wonderful person, nurse, and human being you are. And um, if there's any ever time that we can serve you in any way, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. We will always be here for you. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, Julie, thank you. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you. I've been reading some of the chats and I hope you get to see them later. Everyone is so very, very proud of you. Thank you. And that is the consistent word that I've seen come through. And as Dawn says, anything that any of us at Gannon can do for you, to support you and your nurses, um, other, your colleagues, please never hesitate to ask. Thank you. I just want to add one more thing too. Thank you all um, attendees, especially um, it was very thrilling to see so many of our students. Um, we were talking earlier about how, you know, COVID has given us this opportunity and having this um, event be virtual, I think has made it more available. Although we've always had wonderful attendance um, with our students, but I thank you all students and faculty and alum that are attending tonight. Well, thank you all. Um, I sure we didn't get to everyone's questions. Um, there are a couple more that have come in, but um, perhaps Julie, we can send that information out um, when we do. I can answer them, or if we have time. If not, that's oh, fine. you're back. Okay. Oh, not back. Was I not here? Um, there's a gentleman that said, talk about the qualities you must exhibit as a leader of a team, risks and re rewards of being a leader. Hmm, who could that be? The gentleman asking this question was my college coach. Um, the qualities of a leader, whether nursing or any other area, sports, whatever, uh, patience, uh, an ear to listen, because half of, uh, half of what I feel like I do as a charge nurse, as a leader, is, is just listen and listen to how people feel, 
listen to um, their problems that they need to be solved. Um, what I, put me on the spot, coach. Um, a mental toughness. That is probably one of the biggest things that I felt like I, I earned at Gannon was uh, being mentally tough and um, being adaptable. That it goes along the same thread of just being able to take a situation and adapt to it and thrive in it. And you have to be mentally strong to, to deal with that. I mean, look, I, I explained that I had a patient who died on my shift yesterday. I could have easily ran out the door and had someone else do it or, or deal with that. Um, but you have to be mentally tough and rise to that occasion because that patient and that family needs you. Um, and then the risks and rewards. There's a lot of rewards. Everyone likes the reward, but there's a lot of risks that go with putting yourself out there and being a leader in whatever aspect of life. Um, it's um, it, everything, everything that you do as a leader is a risk. You, you risk being judged, which not a lot of people like to do or not a lot of people like to experience the, the feeling of being judged. I mean, even here, I'm sure I'm being judged in some capacity, good or bad on this talk. Um, so you have to have the ability to just put yourself out there and care, but to a degree and know who yourself is, know who your true self is and what you're all about and what you bring to the table. Um, that's probably the biggest risk is, is you take a leap of faith and you don't really know where you're gonna end up but you have a vision for what you want and you just go for it with all the mental toughness, the adaptability, the intentionality that you can, can muster. And um, I learned a lot of that at Gannon. Thank you, Julie. Um, I think that ends our presentation. Our CEUs will be emailed to everyone. I wish Julie, you, your colleagues, your mom. <laughs> Thank everyone you. the best and to all the students that have been watching this presentation we're proud of you too and we're thankful that you have chosen to become a nurse yes we need more of you bring your friends we're doing our best julie we're yep. turning them out <laughs> all right good night everyone and thank you so much for joining us thank you